Hey guys, in this video series we're going to be building a really simple application using Node.js, Express 4, and Apache Cassandra, which we'll use for our database solution. Alright, um, I'm making this video because I haven't found too many tutorials um, on Node.js in general. Um, and I and I found even less that have to do with Express 4. Uh, most of the Express projects that I have found were um, Express 3. And there's some big changes that you need to know about if you're going to use Express 4. Alright, so don't pay much attention to the application itself because it's going to be really simple. Um, but pay attention to the code and the structure, uh, things like that. Um, the application itself will just be basically a, a form, uh, maybe a newsletter form that a user would fill out with their name and email address, and that's going to get sent to the Cassandra uh, database and will create kind of a, a really simple interface where you can um, edit the user info, you can um, update and delete it. Uh, so just basic CRUD, uh, create, read, update, and delete. All right, so we're going to download a few things. Of course, we need to download Node.js from Node.js.org. Uh, we're also going to have to download Apache Cassandra, which is a, a column-based database. Um, now, I'm using Windows 7, um, so I'm going to be downloading, obviously, the versions for Windows. If you're using Linux or Mac, uh, you can find uh, you can find how to install those as well. I believe that it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then lastly, we're going to install Git. Now, I'm not installing Git for the version control, although if you're building applications, you should be using it. Um, but I basically want with this Windows Git version is the command line interface that it gives you. Because um, I'm going to use that for our node development. Uh, and it gives you a bunch of Unix tools that you can use in Windows. Alright, so let's start with Node.js. Okay, we just want to click on the big install button. That's going to give us um, a Windows installer. Okay, so we'll open that up. In this video, we'll just be gathering the software, we'll be downloading and installing all the software we need. Okay, so next, very straightforward. It's going to go in the program files by default. Yes. Okay, so that's all set. If we click finish, you should see uh, Node.js menu item here. All right, and basically it just offers you this command line interface to deal with Node and um, all your projects, but I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use the Git uh, command line that we're going to download. Okay, so after you download and install, I'm sorry, after you install Node, uh, you want to install Cassandra. So we'll go to Apache, I'm sorry, Cassandra.apache.org. Click on download and you have a few options here. Uh, you can download the tarball, uh, probably the preferred method if you're using Linux, or uh, the Debian package. We're using Windows. Uh, you can use the tarball in Windows, but it's kind of difficult. Um, right here, this data stacks community, uh, this offers uh, a really simplified installation. You can see it comes with a Windows installer and it installs Apache Cassandra, it installs all the, the command line tools, and it also installs something called Ops Center, which is a browser-based graphical um, database management program, uh, which is really cool. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. All right, and I am on Windows 7 64-bit, so I'm going to grab this right here. Okay, so we'll download that. It's uh, 129 megabytes, so it might take a couple minutes. Um, while that's downloading, I'm going to go ahead and download the uh, Git software. 
Okay, so this is at git slash or dash scm.com. And we want to click on downloads for Windows, assuming you're using Windows. All right, so both of those will are downloading. So what I'm going to do is just pause the video and come back when they're done. All right, so the Git uh, software is, is finished downloading, so I'm just going to go ahead and run that. And same thing, just a really simple installer. Just go through. It's going to put it in the program files. Uh, by default, it's going to be the x86 directory, 32-bit. And here we can leave everything. I do want it on the desktop. Now for this option, I'm going to choose the last option here uh, because I want to be able to have these Unix tools that, that are offered through the Windows command prompt. Okay, so choose that. And for this, um, I'm just going to leave the default. All right, so that's finished. You can see we have the little icon on the desktop, and if we open it up, we get a nice bash interface uh, where we can run Unix tools. We can, uh, let's see if, if Node is installed, which it is. Um, also, you want to check if NPM is installed, which should come with Node, and that's a, a Node package manager. Okay, basically it works much like Ruby Gems if you've used Ruby on Rails. Um, it offers these modules, little uh, bits of code. Well, not always little, but usually it's the smaller programs and you can use them in your Node application. Uh, for instance, Express 4 is, is available to us through NPM and that's what we'll be using. Uh, it's one of the more popular, larger modules it's basically a, a, an MVC framework, okay? It gives you uh, all the file structure and everything to work with, so we'll be using that. All right, so now that this is installed, I'm gonna just close that and open up the uh, Datastax installer, which will install Cassandra. All right, let's agree. I'm going to leave these checked because I want it to start as a Windows service. Now Cassandra is it's considered a NoSQL database. Um, but it's 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 a little different than something like MongoDB or CouchDB. Uh, it uses columns, okay, and each column has a key, and a column is basically like a table. If you've used relational databases like MySQL, um, a column is like a table. It has fields that we can set. Um, it works a little different than a table because it's it, it you don't really need a set schema. Um, and you can interact with the database using something called CQL, which is Cassandra query language. Um, and it's, it's very, very similar, almost identical to SQL as far as the, the queries go. Um, how it works in the back end is, is much different. But um, if you've used SQL, then uh, you'd have no problem understanding CQL. And that's ultimately what we'll be using. Um, we're going to use the data stacks node, I'm sorry, Cassandra driver for node. So we'll be doing it through node, um, but the, the statements will be CQL. Okay, so let's see, it says the server is starting. I also have a video um, which I'm pretty much doing the same thing, but I go a little, a little bit uh, more in depth. Um, I think it's called installing Cassandra on Windows or something like that. Okay, so um, like I said, it offers this Op Center program. Um, actually, let me just show you that real quick. 
we're not going to be doing anything with this I just figured I'd show you um, so the service is running so we can go to local localhost 8888 and that'll bring us to the op center that's the port that it's on it's a really sleek interface and gives you a lot of good uh, analytic tools graphs things like that so this is the dashboard um, you can see it gives us some information here the storage capacity uh, the number of nodes will show here um, obviously we only have a single node uh, this is really business enterprise level stuff um, it's really used for big data if you just have a ton of data coming in from your application uh, you can see it shows us the right request the right request latency okay analytics the operating system load things like that uh, we're not going to really go into this I actually haven't used Op Center too much. I usually just deal with the CQL command line. So I don't really know much about this. Um, I just know it looks really cool. Uh, this will show you your nodes, okay? And you can set up multiple nodes across multiple data centers, which is really cool. And it's really easy to scale. Um, so if you need uh, a really good storage solution for your business, then this may be the way to go. Uh, but it really doesn't have anything to do with what we're going to be doing today so I just figured I'd show you that what I will be using a little bit is the CQL shell okay so under this data stacks community edition you should have Cassandra CQL shell and that'll give you a little interface you can create key spaces which is like basically like a schema or even like a database itself and then in the key space you can add columns which are like tables uh, and you can add your fields and we'll be doing that in the I think the next video okay because I just want to get something set up before we actually build our node application alright so everything should be good you should be installed and, and ready to go alright so I will see you in part two